Okay, my name is Steve Mace from Soulwise, and what I'd like to do now is give a um, a video going through the various features and various screenshots of the graphical user interface of the IPCOM uh, AP255 access point. Now, the 255 is what I would call, or what we would call, an in-the-wall access point. So it's actually designed to sit on top of a normal mains, UK mains electricity back box. The, you know, the sort of thing that you get a main socket on or a light switch on. Uh, so if I zoom in there, you can sort of see that we're talking about here. Uh, so it's got all the gubbins behind it and it's designed to be PoE powered. So you put that onto a mains back box where you've got a LAN cable coming into the back with PoE power on it. So that's the um, AP255. So let's go through its setup. And by the default, it's on the address 192.168.0.254. And by default, it's admin, admin for the login. Enter. OK, so let's go through the various screens. Well, the first part is basically just a series of status screens. So system status, you can see the firmware version here, number of collected clients and the IP settings, etc. You've got the wireless status, you know, what channel it's on, etc, 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 and the SSID status. Uh, you've got traffic statistics, amount of data that's going through each Wi-Fi uh, SSID. Uh, you may have gathered this has got two SSIDs um, and about any connected clients per SSID. Okay. Uh, quick setup. Quick setup basically just allows you to very quickly choose whether you want which of the three operating modes you want to do. So, do you want an AP, WDS, or uh, an AP client mode? Um, so, you just choose what mode you want. Bearing in mind this is designed it as an in-the-wall access point, then I'm sure 99 times out of 100, it would just be set up as a normal AP, uh, AP mode, and um, you can choose the uh, primary SSID and set up there, obviously, any security you want there. So that's the quick setup. Now let's go through the, uh, the rest of the screens in more detail. So we've got LAN setup. Well, fairly as always what that means, put in the IP address settings, etc, etc for the product. Um, do you want static IP? Do you want to use DHCP for it? That sort of thing. Um, it's got DHCP server mode on it. I'm sure nobody will ever use this capability, but it does actually have DHCP server built in. Normally, most people would use the main DHCP server from coming from their primary router. So this is a bit, a bit moot, really. Uh, let's go down to wireless settings. Now it's starting to get a little bit more interesting. So let's say we have two SSIDs. Each SSID enables us to set up our own settings for isolation, maximum number of clients, and uh, Wi-Fi security. And I've no idea what Chinese SSID encode means, but I guess somebody in China might know what that means. Uh, let's go to radio now. So as you can see, by default, it's coming up with China set for the country, and that's greyed out. So you can't unchange any of those settings until you do uh, that. That opens up the settings for modification. Now you can go down and change it to England, for example. And you can now change the um, channel that you want to use, whether you want to use 20 or 40 meg wide channels. Um, whether you want SSID isolation, whether you want QoS enabled, etc., etc., and you can lock that back down again now, so it can't easily be changed. So um, just do save on that. I'll sort of do save on that. It's rather nice that this is one of those few devices that doesn't need a full reboot every time you change change something. We've got channel scan. So you can actually scan for uh, neighboring Wi-Fi networks and it'll tell you what channel they're using on. It just helps you choose a more uh, or rather a less crowded channel. What else we've got down here? Let's go to advance. Uh, yeah, lots of horrible things I don't understand. The only thing of interest in here is uh, TX power. Uh, the device itself has a 2 dB antenna built in. Uh, uh, sorry, 3 dB antenna built in, so uh, it's trying to lock you out so you can't go greater than 20 dBm um, EIRP. 
because obviously that's the uh, EU power limit. Um, but if you do that, it does actually give the capability to actually play around with the power, though you can't take it higher than 17 anyway. Um, and it's got all these horrible things that we won't play around with because, well, we don't understand them. It's got an access control, usual access control list, list of MAC addresses that you uh, do want to allow or not allow connection for. Um, it enables you to put a VLAN tag on the um, trunk port, sorry, on the LAN port coming out the front, and also on the primary SSID, so you can have a, a VLAN tag on the primary SSID. Uh, SNMP, uh, yes, it's got it, but we won't worry about it because very few people actually use an SNMP server anyway. Um, so we'll turn that back off again. Uh, deployment. Uh, it does actually, uh, now this product is supported by the um, IPCOM new range of uh, controllers. That's the AC 1000, 2000 and 3000 products plus some of the other, other routers which have some degree of AP control. So you can actually do uh, some sort of management control through those controllers. So here it's just saying, if you want to enable it, please give its IP address and what, um, what port, port, ports it's using. And finally, if you go down to tools, all the usual things you expect to see, firmware upgrade, setting the date and time, um, restoring to factory defaults and backing up the configuration. It's got two sets of users that you can modify. You've got an administrator and user and a sort of a user user with limited functionality. Usual diagnostics tools like ping and that sort of thing. Um, capability to, if you want, do a timed reboot. Uh, ability to turn off the LEDs if you want and um, another ping test that you can do on the uplink port um, that's it there's not a lot I can say about this product really um, I say usually it goes into scenarios where people are just going to use it as an in-the-wall access point for example hotels or something like that in which case all you have to worry about is what the SSA, SSID is and whether you want any isolation or that sort of thing. Apart from that, it's a pretty much um, a no-frills product. And that's it. That's the AP255. Thank you.